VA7 Model 1 with the crystal clear audio mod that we installed. So now that we have this thing sounding amazing, let's go ahead and improve the video quality as well. And make this look like this. First we need to build this simple circuit. I'm going to improvise and use a few things I happen to have on hand. I would recommend using something like this for a slightly more professional look. So this is the layout I chose to use. Our chroma comes from pin 15 into this pad here, through this capacitor into this resistor, and out this pad into our connector. And our luma comes from pin 16 of the encoder to this one into the base of our transistor. Now when you hook up your transistor, make sure you check what type of pinout it is. Because if you hook it up wrong, it'll blow the transistor. Then our 5 volts comes from here into the collector of the transistor. Our luma signal is pumped out through the emitter to this pad here and then out to our connector. This is our ground point right here. And these pins here are also going to be ground. Go ahead and flip it over so you can see the back here. Now that our circuit is all finished, we need a spot to install it, as well as the S-Video Jack. Personally, I always try to find a way around cutting these old consoles. So instead of drilling holes and destroying the case, I'm going to just remove the RF modulator here and mount my S-Video Jack in the existing hole. And I'm going to get my 5 volts for my board from here. Sorry about that, made a mistake there. You can use this for power, but only if you clip the inductor right here, labeled L6, and bridge the connections. Otherwise, you have to use voltage regulator. Pin 3 here, labeled O on the VA7. Instead of desoldering these pins here, I'm just going to clip them right down there. And then I'll desolder the rest of it. Alright, here we are flipped over. And the points that we need to remove are here, here, and here. I find that it makes it much easier to desolder if you add fresh solder to the joints before trying to desolder them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. Also another thing, always make sure that it's heated thoroughly before you try to pull it out. Otherwise you, you won't get it all out and it'll just make it even harder to remove it. as clean as they're going to get. Go ahead and wiggle them just a little bit. Just to be sure. Yep, seems like it's already loose. So we can flip it over and clip these pins and take it out. And with those pins clipped, it should just kind of pull right out. Look at that. so easily. See that? Just pulled right out. So using the existing pins didn't work like I had planned on. So I just took the legs of some resistors and uh, soldered them in there and kind of kind of bent them up like that. Just gonna 
set my board right on those. We're going to go ahead and solder our aluminum chroma wires. Our chroma comes one, two, three pins down right here. And the luma comes from the one right below it. First I'm going to start off by tinning my wires here. I'm going to do that. Just add fresh solder to the ends of these. It makes them so much easier to solder to these little tiny pads. And also make sure that they're nice and short like that. Now we're going to add flux, another thing that will make this so much easier. Just a tiny bit. One last thing here, we got an NRS video jack. How I'm gonna do this. She's got this nut here. It's got this little piece too. And this has video jack. It's a little too small. It goes right through it. Chances are you could probably find one that would fit in there just right. I'm just gonna kinda put this ring on first. Prettiest. It's going to be in the back of the console anyways. Now that we have that in place, i got my piece of wire here. I've already got it stripped and tinned. And I uh, connected my two grounds on the this video jack here, just a leg that I have from some resistors. So go ahead and get these wires soldered in. Okay, all finished. Let's hook it up and see how it looks. So as you can see, there's definitely a huge difference. Keep in mind, these are pictures of my CRT taken with my iPhone, so it does look quite a bit better in person, but the increase in quality is shown very well in these pictures. The edges are much sharper, making it look a lot less blurry, and the colors are much more saturated instead of washed out looking like on composite. And I'm not seeing any noise or static. One thing I will mention is that there is very faint vertical lines, also known as jail bars but most people won't notice them when playing on a CRT. Overall, I would say this mod is definitely worth it if you have a CRT with an S-Video input. Stay tuned for more retro tinkering. Thank you for watching, until next time.